Hang on here. There we go. Oh, finally, it finally clicked on on my end, so it's going to let me do it. Occasionally, my computer likes to glitch out, so uh, hopefully the recording will go as planned. Um, thank you all for jumping on today. We are really excited to have you here. For those of you that I do not know yet, I am Kim Schaefer, and I am the Regional League Manager that partners with the Indiana, Michigan, Northern, and Southern Ohio PGA sections. All four of those section staffs have collaborated together to provide this four webinar series. We held our first webinar last week, and that was on PGA.coach. We had a great webinar with some really good guest speakers. So if you missed it and you would like to review it, please let either myself or one of your section staff members know because we're happy to share that recording with you. And I want to take just a minute and allow each one of those section staff members to just kind of introduce themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and let um, Brad, Chelsea, Derek, and Stacy, you guys just kind of go right around the horn and just take a minute and kind of introduce yourself from your sections. Right, um, I'll just go first. I'll go in order of what Kim said. Uh, I'm Brad. I'm the uh, Junior Golf uh, Director and Player Development Director for the Northern Ohio PGA. Been here for about five years. Um, I'm happy to see that there's a lot of uh, Northern Ohio members on here. And uh, obviously, you guys can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Good morning. I'm Chelsea with the Michigan PGA. Uh, I've also been here for about five years. Uh, really excited about PGA Junior League and all the topics we're going to discuss today. And if any Michigan pros have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Good morning, everyone. My name is Derek, and I'm with the Southern Ohio PGA as the Director of Operations. I've been with the section office for about four years, and like Chelsea and Brad said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Good morning, everybody. My name is Stacy. I'm with the Indiana um, section, and I've been with the section for, it's been almost over nine and a half years now, going on 10 years in April. Um, so I'm the Director of Player Development. So um, thanks to all of our Indiana pros for jumping on today. And if anybody has any questions, definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, all four of those section staff members are great resources for you. I partner with each one of them, work really closely with them, and it is mainly our goal to assist all of you with all of your coaching and player development programs. So we really encourage you to reach out to us anytime you need anything at all. And we, we look forward to partnering with you. Um, we also encourage you today to participate during this call. So feel free to, to speak up, you know, raise your hand, ask questions, share comments, whatever it might be. Um, however, we do ask that you keep either your computer or your phone on mute unless you are trying to, to speak or ask a question, because it will just drastically reduce the amount of, of background no, noise if you do so. Um, you can also, if you're on with your computer, you can also use the chat feature and type in any sort of questions that you want in that chat area, and we will monitor that, and we will certainly answer any questions as they arise. So we, we look forward to a really, really good discussion today, and we certainly encourage you to participate. Today's topic is going to be PGA Junior League and all of the regular season enhancements. So I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can kind of follow along with me today. And let me pull it up here and see what we've got. Oops. Let me get it. Here we go. Now it's going to work. All right. That way you can follow along and see what we've got. Um, so today in particular, we're going to talk about the regular season enhancements. Next week, we're going to talk about all of the new championship season enhancements. So as we look through this today, let me pull this up here. Um, there we go. Now it's going to work for me. First thing I want you to know is how all these enhancements come to life. So at the end of every season, consumers, so basically your families, and all of the professionals have the opportunity to fill out end-of-the-year surveys. 
And we take really deep dives into all of those surveys. And we'll look at all of the feedback and take that in and try to analyze it and figure out exactly what people like about the program and what they believe could be better about the program. Your regional league manager team throughout the country and all of the section staffs from all 41 sections work really closely together. And we work really closely with, with all of the pros in the areas as well. And so we get a lot of feedback throughout the year. We take copious notes, write it all down, and we share all that feedback with the national team. There is a National PGA Junior League Committee that is composed of PGA professionals, PGA Junior League staff members, uh, executive directors, and district directors. And they all come together, review all that feedback, and then help determine a plan of action for the next year to try to refine that feedback and use it to elevate the entire PGA Junior League experience for everyone for the next year. So please know that, that your feedback really, really matters. And your feedback and your family's feedback really truly are the absolute driving force behind all of these new enhancements. So that's how kind of everything comes to life. And the intended outcomes and goals for the 2022 enhancements include, number one, we just want to create more opportunities for more kids to play more golf and especially in a team environment where they get that that socialization with one another and with expert pga coaches so all of it, all of the enhancements for this year are to create more opportunities for kids to enjoy the game we are focused on improving just the overall consumer engagement and the consumer experience we also want to make sure that we're being ADM compliant. So ADM stands for the American Development Model for Golf, which we, we covered thoroughly in last week's webinar. And we want to make sure that everything within our programming is compliant with that ADM model. We also want to provide more flexibility for PGA professionals to schedule local, local leagues year round. So that way they can do as much or as little as they would like to do. Whatever works best for them at their facilities, we just want to provide them opportunities and flexibility to make things that will work well for them. And then finally, we want to enhance that, that value creation and create more revenue opportunities for PGA professionals and also incremental revenue opportunities for their facilities and for their employers. So that's kind of how the enhancements come to life. And then also basically our goals for what those enhancements will hopefully do during the, the 2022 season. I do have a short, it's like a three minute video that has just been produced that gives you a real brief look at the overall enhancements for 2022. And then after that video, then we're going to really take a much deeper dive into the regular season enhancements to make sure that you understand everything that you can expect for this season. So let me pull this up for you. Inside each of us is a need to belong. To belong to a community belong to a team. For over 10 years now, kids and families have been finding that sense of belonging through PGA Junior League. PGA Junior League! And what's been working so well for over a decade is now getting even better. Yeah! We're talking about the opportunity for year-round golf, an extended championship season, and new technology to make it all simple and smooth to operate. Introducing the Game Changer Club. PGA Junior League players will pay a one-time annual fee to get local league access in as many seasons as they want all year long. Also, players will get a custom uniform and team kit to use across seasons, a digital center with fun games and events, plus opportunities from partners and sponsors. PGA coaches will keep leading kids through fun games, skills, and activities with a renewed commitment to the American Development Model, or ADM, for golf. Because being a golfer is more than just swinging the club. 
ADM applies a holistic approach to playing sports. Whether their desire is to play for fun or to win championships, ADM prepares kids physically and mentally for any sport they choose to play. Now, more competitive young golfers can aspire to the National Car Rental PGA Junior League Championship season. All-star opportunities are for players in both the 13U and 17U age divisions, pending eligibility in alignment with ADM. Making the all-star team provides the opportunity to advance through sectional, regional, and national championship levels. Now with more play, more coaching, more fun, and more memories, because we're amping up the all-star experience. And with the addition of an all-star leaderboard, regional competitions will grow doubling the total number of teams advancing, and the championship season becomes more than just a single event for kids. How, you ask? By introducing the opportunity for PGA coaches to host all-star play days. It's an optional part of the pathway, and all-star teams can participate in as many of these as they'd like. Bottom line, we're out to create an experience they'll never forget. To drive it all home, new and improved technology. Combined with our website, the mobile app makes it super easy for everyone to keep up with these exciting improvements. To our PGA Junior League community, get ready for more flexibility, more fun, and more opportunities to tee up, get out and play, and learn to love golf. Head to PGAJuniorLeague.com to learn more. Inside each of us is a need to belong. So that's just a brief video that gives you a sneak peek into what we're going to talk about next week with the championship season, as well as what we're going to talk about today with the regular season. So for the regular season, we've got three key things that we're going to focus on today. One is a custom built technology platform. Two would be there's some new terminology that you need to be aware of. And then three is what we're calling the game changer membership model. So we're going to go take a much deeper dive into those three things. First of all, when it comes to the new custom built website, um, why are we getting a new website? Well, number one reason is we have really listened to all of our PGA golf professionals. And over the course of the last few years, um, we have truly enjoyed and are thankful for the partnership that we had with Sport Engine. But a lot of our PGA professionals said that they had a really difficult time using the website, that it wasn't user friendly for them and that it was, quite frankly, a, a time consumer for them. So we have, the PGA of America has custom built a website specifically for PGA Junior League. Um, the last few weeks, I've actually gotten to do some training and gotten to go in with kind of a test account and started to try it out. And I will tell you what I've been able to learn so far, it has been fantastic. And it will be just the opposite of a time consumer. It will be a time saver for you. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that with everybody once it's fully available. Um, but this new website, it's going to be much more user friendly, more efficient. And I think something that, that where you're going to find everything you need kind of on one page. So instead of having to go and look at a, at a different page on a website and then come back and then go to another page on a website, you're going to be able to have it all right at your fingertips on one page, which is going to basically be known as your coach dashboard. Um, so I think there's a lot of positives that are going to come out of that. Another one is that when you use either the website or the mobile app, what you're going to find is that the PGA of America is putting PGA Junior League, PGA Family Cup, and PGA.coach all in one back-end platform for you. So you're only going to have one place to go to access all three of those things and manage your PGA.coach profile, manage your PGA Family Cup events, and manage your PGA Junior League programs. So you're basically going to have one password to remember, and that password is going to be your PGA.org login password that you always use when you log into PGA.org. So they're making it much simpler for you to find everything that you need with that one back-end platform. Um, the, the new mobile app that they're creating is going to be really, really quick to use. 
And one of the, the key features on that is it's going to be super easy for you, for you to communicate with your families. If you have a huge program like some of our pros do where they have over 100 kids at, at one facility and they might have eight teams, you can very easily either communicate to one team. So let's say team number six has a practice tomorrow and you want to remind them. You can easily click a button, communicate to team number six and say, hey, don't forget practice tomorrow at four o'clock. Or team number four, hey, you have a game tomorrow at five o'clock, wear your orange jersey. You can also communicate with all of your players if you have a message that you want to share out with everybody. So if you wanted to say, you know, hey, team party this Saturday for everybody, you can easily send out a communication to all of your teams at the exact same time. So a lot of functionality with that mobile app that's going to make it easy for you to communicate with your families. And one of the things that we receive from the feedback from families is they want more communication and they want more information. And so this will make it easier for you to give that to them. And uh, the, the other things, just as an example, that I think you'll find um, nice with the new system is you will have the ability to do discount codes this year. So in the past, sometimes we'll have pros ask us, you know, hey, I've got a family with five kids that are registering. I would love to be able to offer them a sibling discount. And in the old system, that just wasn't possible. But here, you yourself can go in and create a discount code and then give that code to that family so that when they register, they've got that, that discount code. Um, for start registration dates and close registration dates, in the past, when you registered online, pretty much as soon as your background check passed and you did your APS training, your program just opened up. Well, a lot of pros didn't want their program to just open up right away. Maybe they were going to have a big, huge kickoff day, and they wanted it to open April 1st, but they wanted to register in February. That really wasn't a possibility. Now, when you go in to register, it will ask you, what day do you want your registration to open? So if you want to have a big kickoff party on April 1st, you can have your registration open on April 1st. Um, the other nice thing will be with the registration close dates. You will have full access to open and close those registration dates. So these changes from your end can be made instantly. So you will not need to request changes from either myself or your section staff any longer. It gives you complete control over your registration close date. So for example, if you set your registration close date as June 1st, you know what's going to happen. On June 2nd, like three families are going to walk in the door and they're going to want to register. And so instead of having to, to reach out to us to get that changed, you can actually go right into your coach dashboard and you can change that date and you can make it say, you know, June 2nd. And then those three families can register right there. And then when they leave the golf shop, if you would like to change it back to June 1st, you can go in and just change it right back to June 1st. So it gives you complete control over your program. And if you need anything, you can just do it instantly, just like that. So I think there's going to be a lot of new things that are going to be really, really nice for you to be able to have that, that control over your program. Um, the other thing that's going to be new for this year is when it comes to payment for your program. You may always choose to only collect the, you know, your, your program fee directly from your families. So you do not ever have to have the PGA collect the fees for you. One option is you can always collect your, your coaching fees on your own directly from your families. But if you would like for the PGA to assist with that payment process so that they're collecting the fees and getting them to you, this, this next year they will be using what they call Stripe integration. And Stripe is, is basically a, a company that's going to help in the processing of the payments. And you would go in and set up all of your Stripe account information, which would allow for the payments to be directly deposited into your bank account. So it can either go into your personal bank account or if the facility wants it to go into the facility bank account, you may do that as well. Now, in the past, you could get a check. This next year, it's either going to be you collect the fees on your own from your families, or you can use the Stripe integration, set up a Stripe account, and then you'll receive those payments through direct deposit. 
Now, the nice thing with the new Stripe account is you will receive those payments immediately. So in the past, you might have players registering in February, March, and April, and then you don't order your team kits until maybe June 1st, and it usually would take three to four weeks after they ship your team kits until you receive that check which would basically put it into mid-July when you're going to be receiving your, your overall check. With the new Stripe integration, as your players register within 48 hours, you will see that direct deposit right into your bank account or the facility's bank account. So there's not that long time where you're waiting for, for payment. So we're really excited about all of these new technology uh, advancements. And I've got one slide here that I'm going to share with you. This is kind of a sneak peek. Um, this is basically a test account that, that I set up. And on this page where it says program details right here, you can are currently on the program details page. You can type in here absolutely anything and everything that you want about your program to share with your, your families before they register. And that will show up online for them. Right here, all of these tabs right here are things that you can do from this single page. So where it says schedule, you can click on schedule. And literally, I created like five practices and five games in about seven minutes the other day. It is super easy to go in and schedule games and schedule practices. You can also look at your teams. So you can go in here and see how many teams you have and which kids that you want to roster onto each one of those teams. You can go into the scoring tab, and it's super easy to go in and just, hey, you know, we had seven points, they had five points, and then immediately after you put in those scores, it will all show up right here in the standings. So that then you can see the league standings and see exactly where you and your team are in those league standings. This exact same page, you can create your discount codes. So you can click on this button, go in, create those discount codes, and, and have those available for your families. And then where it says fulfillment orders, that's a place where you can go to order your team kits. And again, it's just a couple of buttons and you can go right in there and order those team kits. Um, one thing that I really like about the new team kit area is one of the questions you're going to be asked the first time that you register is when would you like your team kits to be delivered? So if you put down, you know, June 1st is when I would like to receive my team kits. The program itself is going to automatically send you reminders. So, for example, like maybe April 15th, it will tell you, hey, you need to order your team kits by May 9th in order to have them by June 1st. So, you know, make sure that you're recruiting your players and getting things ready. And you might receive another one, you know, May 1st. Hey, you've got nine more days until you need to order your team kits. So you'll get a couple reminders that will just keep you on track and make sure that you're getting those team kits ordered in a, in a timely manner. So there's a lot of really great things in the new technology that we're all super, super excited about. So I, I um, have also seen in the last couple days, actually, they're creating a library, so to speak, of like 20 to 30 second videos and you can click on any one of those videos. So if you wanted to say, hey, how do I order my team kits? You can click on a, on a video and someone will have their screen up and they will be showing you right on the screen exactly what you need to do to order your team kits or to create a discount code or to score a game or whatever that particular activity is that you need to do on the website or on the mobile app. And there'll be a whole list of just little bitty video tutorials that you can use to access any and all of that information. So I believe that we're going to be making it as easy as possible for you to learn the new technology. And with it being more user friendly, I think you're going to find that, that it will be easier for you as well. Um, so that's something we're super excited about. Um, the second thing on our list today was kind of some new terminology. So in previous years, there was what we called captains of the team. And the captains were the ones that were either PGA or LPGA members or associates that would be the, the person that would register the program online. And to be kind of in a little bit more alignment with PGA.coach, we are now 
kind of sunsetting the, the captain terminology. And from now on, those captains are going to be called PGA coach. And so those are still need to be either PGA or LPGA members or associates, and they will be the one person that will go online and register the program. But they're now going to be called PGA coach. Our old terminology of coach is now assistant coach. And assistant coaches can really be anybody. They could be other PGA or LPGA staff members. Um, Chelsea, can you hear me? My, my, yes, yes. Okay, my computer just sent me a note across the screen that says, no one can hear you, you have been muted. So that kind of concerned me. So I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> That was something I never had before. So I just want to make sure. Thank you. Um, so when it comes to uh, being an assistant coach, you can that can be other PGA or LPGA staff members at your facility. It could be a parent. It could be one of your high school or college golfers. It could be one of your cart room staff. Um, any of those can be assistant coaches. They still will be required to do the background check and the APS training. But this year, something that will be new is you will have complete control over what level of access that you want those assistant coaches to have with your program. So, for example, there are some head golf professionals that they might register as the PGA coach for their program, but then they're really kind of hands off and they allow their assistant pros to really be involved and really run and organize the program. So those assistant pros, in that case, would want to have full access to the program so that they can go in and do everything with the program. There are some cases where you might have um, your somebody register as the PGA coach, and then their assistant coaches, you might only want them to have communication access only. So, for example, they can communicate out to the teams and tell them, you know, hey, practice is tomorrow at 4, but they don't have that back-end access where they can um, get into all the financial details of your program or something else that you might consider to be a little more confidential. And then the final level of access is basically kind of no access. They're strictly volunteers. So they'll still be listed on the website as an official coach, but you're not giving them access to communicate with the teams in any way. They might be someone that would come and show up at a practice and kind of man a station for you or help in, in some sort of assistant coach way on site, but they won't be doing any of your admin or communication. So you'll be able to assign your coaches different levels of access, which for you as a PGA.coach gives you a little bit more control over exactly what your, your assistant coaches can see on the back end of the, the computer system. So those are, are several new things that you'll see for the, the technology and um, the terminology for, for the new year. I have already been talking for a really long time. And so I'm going to take a break from talking about the, the new stuff for this year. We have a lot of you that have reached out to us about questions about your programs. And we're going to have some of our section staffers share with you three of our biggest growth trends that are happening right now for PGA Junior League. And that way you can learn about those growth trends and you can see if that might be a good fit for you at your facility or not. Um, so I'm going to let Stacy kind of kick us off. She's going to talk for a minute about in-house leagues. Thank you guys again for joining us today. So like Kim said, um, one of the biggest um, one of the biggest growth areas that I'm going to talk about is um, the growth of in-house leagues and how tremendous it's been. An official in-house league is formed when a PGA coach recruits at least 24 players for their PGA Junior League program. So for an in-house league, all practices and games will be hosted at your facility and there will be no travel to other golf courses. So you have complete control over your program. So one of the biggest benefits for an in-house league is the full control that PGA coach has over the experience, and they can schedule all their practices and games early in the year and not have to worry about scheduling with other facilities. With an in-house league, they can create their own local rules. So for example, um, they could use extremely short yardages or make double bogey instead of triple bogey. 
the maximum score. You can really make the program work best for what works best for your players and your facility. Um, you can incorporate a family buffet into all your practices and games and increase your food and beverage income or ch charge for spectator carts and increase the facility income with cart revenue. In-house leagues can also adjust the demand on the, on the consumer. For example, one pro had a bunch of younger siblings that wanted to play and get jerseys, so that pro, um, that pro created what we call it was a peewee division for four to seven-year-olds, and that age division only played three whole games for 50, and played from 50 yards out, but, they played, but the players and the families loved it. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility to create the program that works best for your facility so you can do different age groups and everything else and do yardages, um, basically to make it fun for your kids and to help grow your program. Um, pros also like having the all-star team players come from their facility so their families can bond with one another and grow in their friendship during the championship season. So. If you have an uh, in-house league, all of your players for your all-star team would all come from your, your facility and you have control over that and don't have to split it with other um, golf courses that you may be in a league with. Um, you have complete and total control over the program and the pros that host in-house leagues have said their families really enjoyed the consistency of the schedule and the quality of the, of the experience. By hosting an in-house league, it gives you the ability to set your schedule in January, February, and be able to communicate that with your parents early on. Um, we've also seen several in-house leagues with less than 24 players, so they may just have 16 players and create two teams of eight or four teams of four and use smaller team sizes. So if you have less than 24 players, you may still host an in-house league. Um, you simply just would not be eligible for postseason events. So for many leagues, they're very developmental and have completely fine and are completely fine with hosting a small in-house league and they have no desire to compete in the championship season. So this works very well for them. Um, there are also in-house leagues um, that will have very large in-house leagues, but they still have one travel team that may play multiple facility leagues with other area facilities. They may, ha may have tryouts for the travel team, but they have found that this is a good solution for any or more competitive players that would like to travel. We have a few of these in Indiana where they have an in-house league, but they have like one travel team and that, that travel team is in a league with um, other teams and everything. So they still get that experience if they have players that want to do that and they have players that are able to travel and um, want to get that experience of playing another golf course. So for in-house leagues, you can always host your own in-house league and then just schedule some fun scrimmage matches with other area facilities that don't count toward the official league standing. This is a great way to provide a couple of travel days for families that would like to do so and give those players the experience of playing another golf course instead of just playing your golf course for the entire season. So um, hopefully that helps, gives you some ideas with growing your program this coming year. If you have a lot of kids starting to come out and everything, this is another option for you. So does anybody have any questions on in-house leagues? Um, like I said, we've seen a huge increase in the number of facilities offering in-house leagues over the past few years. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Stacy. Um, for those of you that are on the call, as Stacy said, we're seeing a huge growth in the number of, of in-house leagues. Um, but just know there's so much flexibility there. All of those different ways that you can do an in-house league. You can truly do it in-house where you don't travel at all or you can have a kind of a developmental in-house and a competitive team that wants to go out and travel you know there's just a lot of different ways to do it um so if you're interested at all i encourage you to reach out to us and we'll just kind of talk further through all of those those different options um but when you start to get a lot of demand from from your your players and you see your teams growing from like 12 to 24 to 30 something to 40 something it's once you get that many players it, you'll find it sometimes is just a lot easier to have have an in-house league where you can kind of control all those factors um i'm gonna let derek speak for a minute about one of our biggest things uh that we've seen these last year and that is um the growth that we're seeing in fall leagues so derek i'll let you take that away Thanks, Kim. So with fall leagues, this is one of those 
things that really um, was born out of some of the surveys that parents and coaches and captains have filled out in the past where, uh, you know, the end of the season comes for most of us towards the end of July. And a lot of kids felt like they didn't have an opportunity the rest of the fall season uh, to continue playing, but they had a great experience over the summer. So uh, the fall league kind of provides them the opportunity to uh, still play that team golf and be around the club club with their friends. So obviously it looks different in every part of the country, given the weather we're all in a fairly similar region. So uh, for us, obviously doing a fall league could, could look like a three to four week type program versus a one or two month program that you might see in the spring or the summer. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility with it still similar to uh, what Stacy just mentioned with the in-house leagues. You could continue doing that in the fall or this could be a multi-facility league like you've had maybe out throughout your summer season. So uh, again, this is another way to just provide you with some additional revenue as the season is winding down and really just keep the families engaged at the club. Uh, you could still maybe keep them there for a dinner and uh, probably wouldn't be doing the pool pool days like you might be in the summer, but they could still be around the club for things outside of the golf. So another good opportunity. Obviously staffing as we get into the fall months is always a challenge for facilities. Uh, we lose the part-time staff, maybe some of the outside help with kids going back to school. So one thing we've seen people do with fall leagues is really just either get parents, um, high school kids to volunteer. Um, and, and we've always got positive feedback from some of those high school, college age kids that volunteer. The kids love to be around uh, those older kids who maybe they look up to, just enjoy hanging out with. So there's always good, uh, you know, mentoring going on with that age group. Another challenge during the fall is the school year is going on, so you don't have the daylight that you have in the summer. Obviously, the tea sheet can fill up pretty quickly on the weekend. So one thing we've seen, maybe instead of doing a nine-hole match, it's a six-hole match, or depending on the age, it could even be you know a three-hole match. There's, again, a lot of flexibility there. You can kind of make the league what is best for you and your facility. So if you have any interest in this, definitely reach out to your section office or Kim. We'd love to help get the program going. I know Kim's going to talk about the Game Changer model here com coming up in a few minutes, but hopefully that will help increase our participation with the fall leagues. Awesome. Thanks so much, Derek. Yeah, we're seeing more and more fall leagues. And uh, quite frankly, the kids and the families, they just don't want to stop. They just want to keep on playing. So that's a great way to keep them out on the golf course. Um, the last growth trend that we're really seeing a lot of, and um, actually Chelsea from Michigan is going to speak about it, but um, they had a lot of new 17U players in Michigan this year. Um, so we're, she's going to share a little bit with the 17U division and the growth that we've seen there as well. Perfect. Yeah, so we did see a huge uptick in the growth of 17U uh, for 2021, and we really believe that that's going to continue to grow for 2022 as well. Uh, we also had four teams compete at the 17U state championship. So we were able to get that competitive environment all the way over to the state championship. Uh, but we really kind of see 17U as that perfect way for players who are not participating in their high school teams or really don't have an interest in playing in highly competitive individual competitions. But instead, we see 17U as that way to engage the kids who just want to play the game for fun in a friendly and social environment. Unfortunately, in golf, a lot of kids are quitting around the age of 13. And 13 is kind of when that 13U uh, area is having the kids age out. But because, you know, we really want to create that environment that is fun and social and friendly and create that recreational environment for the older kids as well. So we continue to engage them and they don't quit the sport. We really believe that 17U has that option for the recreational golfer who's 14 to 17. 
There's so many different competitive uh, outlets for kids in golf, but there really isn't that com recreational, social friendly outlet for kids at that age range in golf. Um, so we've really seen that uptick here in Michigan. A lot of those players are social. They are not your high school players. They're not the kids going out and competing in the AJGA events. They're the kids who just want to play the sport for fun and want to play the sport for their lifetime. Um, so the 17U division is really flexible. Uh, there are only three matches with the two-person scramble format. So you really only need six players for game days. We also see a lot of our facilities collaborate together. So one facility may not be able to get six uh, 17 U players, but within their league, everybody will bring one or two 17 U players and they either mash them up together and create new teams for the day to play against each other. Or if one team brought two players and another brought two, they'll just have one match going out that day. So it's really flexible on how you kind of set up the matches or how you even construct the 17 new teams. Um, and then we also have some players and professionals who really like to kind of experiment with the different formats. At this age, sometimes the two-person scramble, if they've been playing it all the way through 13U, can get uh, a little bit redundant. So we have our pros mixing up the format. Some of them will add in a shamble or an alternate shot. Um, and it's really fun for this age range to be able to experiment in different playing formats aside from just that um, two-person scramble. So there's a ton of flexibility with that 17U option. And we really believe that the players who don't want to play highly competitive golf really thrive in this environment. Um, do you guys have any questions right now about 17U? I would love to help kind of field those. And if not, if 17U has kind of piqued your interest, please reach out to your section. Uh, staff or Kim after. But if there are questions on 17U, I'd love to answer those now. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chelsea. Um, you know, for 17U, I've had a couple professionals tell me that for their 17U division, that it's kind of the easiest thing they've ever done. And what they've told me is, is you know, they'll basically do their 17U program in-house and um, however many kids show up that day, they'll put them on two-person teams and send them out to play together. And they, they've told me that, that they, that age range doesn't really need a lot of on-course supervision. So they'll maybe do one clinic a week with them, but then set up a couple play days a week so that those kids can just get out and play golf together. And they'll be there to kind of start them and they'll be there when they, they finish but that they do not require that on-course time that the, the 13U division does. So they've told me it's been a really great way for them to keep those kids out on the golf course. So, you know, we've got in-house leagues, we've got fall leagues, we've got the 17U division. Those are the three biggest areas that we're seeing for growth in, in PGA Junior League. And we just wanted to share those with you so that if you have any questions or, you know, if you have that interest, you can kind of think about it and then always reach out to us and we can always give you more information as well. Um, we are going to chat about the final new regular season enhancement this year, which is known as the Game Changer Club. So based on all the growth trends that we just shared with you, kind of, you know, more in-house leagues, more fall leagues, um, looking at all that feedback from our consumers, this year we're completely altering the way that we look at PGA Junior League to provide more opportunities for more kids to play golf more during more seasons throughout the year. And so as a result, we now have the new Game Changer Membership Club. So the way that this will work is a Game Changer Membership Model is a one-time only $99 annual membership fee. So a consumer will register to become a Game Changer member at the very beginning of the season and pay that $99 membership fee first. Then once they have paid that fee, then they will have full access to all of the programs and all of the seasons for PGA Junior League that are available on the website. So how this really comes to life is 
for a, I'm going to give you an example, a family that lives in Florida does a spring program with one facility, but then they vacation with their grandparents for the whole summer in Michigan. And so then they do a summer PGA Junior League program in Michigan, and then they go back to Florida for fall once school starts, and they do a fall PGA Junior League program back in Florida. That family was potentially doing three different programs in previous years where there was a $75 fee per program. So that family was paying $225 in program fees for PGA REACH fees in, a, in previous years. This year, they would be able to pay a one-time $99 membership fee and play in as many programs and as many seasons as they would like to do so. So for the consumer, it's actually going to be a real cost saver for them. Um, I also have scenarios where, um, like I know in both Northern and Southern Ohio, I have situations where families will play just during June and July, they'll play on multiple PGA Junior League programs. And so like, for example, one program might have practices on Tuesday nights and games on Thursday nights. And another program might have practices on Wednesday nights and games on Saturday afternoons. And so these multiple families are in both of those programs and do PGA Junior League for both teams throughout the entire summer because they just love it so much. So where they were paying $150 in previous years in, in, in fees for both of those programs, now they will do that $99 one-time membership fee. I've also got a situation where I've got, had some pros who had very, very large summer programs, and they were doing them in-house, very large summer programs in-house. And when it came time for the fall, about 80% of the kids in their fall program were, had been in their summer program. And so they decided that they did not want to charge them again for that $75 fee. So they collected all of their fees offline, and they basically ran a, pro, a fall program, but just did not have their players register through the PGA Junior League website. And so what they did was for the roughly 20% of the kids that were brand new for the fall, they ended up just getting them like kind of orange uh, t-shirts or blue t-shirts to coordinate with the other kids who still had their, their jerseys from the summer season. Well, at the end of that fall season, I had multiple pros reach out to me that had done this, this kind of uh, PGA Junior League season in the fall, but hadn't registered online. And they told me two things. They said, you know what? We were trying to save money for the 80% by not having them pay that $75 fee again. But what we didn't factor in was how disappointed the 20% would be that didn't get the jerseys. And they said those kids did not like having different t-shirts than what the other kids had. And they were actually really disappointed. And they said the other thing is we found it extremely difficult because we usually use the, um, the mobile app to communicate with our families. And since there was not, we did not have any of our families register online for the fall program that we did, we didn't have that capability to communicate with them. And so as a result, it was very difficult for us to keep up with all of the different emails and things like that, rather than just sending out notifications through the mobile app. So those pros have already told me that they love this new Game Changer membership model because now their families can pay that $99 one-time membership fee and they can play in as many seasons as they want. So what will they get for that Game Changer membership fee? For that $99 fee, they'll get the, the team kits that they've always had before, but now it's going to have the, the last name on the back of the jerseys so that that way that, that last name can travel to different programs and different seasons throughout the year. And they're going to have an online kids club. So there's going to be a lot of interactive games and things like this for the kids to play online. Um, there's going to be kind of a virtual, like an augmented reality game. Think of like a Pokemon, but for golf. And so there's going to be some really fun interactive games. And then the families are going to actually have access to Perk Spot, 
which is a great way for them to get kind of different discounts. Like I know I get that email weekly from Perkspot and sometimes there'll be things on there for, you know, hey, you know, discounts at the Cinemark movies or, you know, something like that, that, that the families could use. And most importantly, they're going to get the opportunity to, uh, you know, participate in as many programs and as many seasons as they want at a much more cost-effective rate for the families. Um, so that's how basically that Game Changer membership model will work. And they'll go online, register for the Game Changer Club first, and then they'll gain access to all of the other programs that they would like to be a part of. And so if they want to register for your program, they'll join the Game Changer Club first, then they'll find your program, and they'll register for your program, and they will pay whatever your coaching fee is. And they'll either pay that directly online, or you can always um, collect those fees offline on your own directly from your families if, if you would like to do so. Um, so I know that's a lot of information to take in uh, for one day, um, but any questions at all about the new uh, Game Changer membership model, the new technology, the new terminology, or any of the, the topics that we talked about today, anything that pops in your mind, feel free to, to jump in and ask a question. Kim, we had one come through the chat asking about the $99 fee. Is it per child or family? It's per child. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Per child. It's basically, yep. it's, re it's replacing the 75 that's been the past few years. It's now going to be 99 going forward. So just remember when you're doing your pricing and everything for your program that that fee went up from 75 to 99 this year. Yeah, so in the pre exactly right. In previous years, it was $75 per program, and now it's $99 for the whole year. So exactly right. Um, yeah, any other questions or comments at all about any of the above topics that we've done today? Okay. Well, please. And the other one that came yeah. through, it looks like, um, when does this all launch? When will it launch? Is that what you yeah. said? Okay, good. I'm glad you said that because I wasn't seeing that on my end come up on the chat channel. Um, so coach registration will hopefully open up sometime right around December 1st. They haven't given a specific date yet, but they're currently having some of the PGA members that are on the national committee. They're actually going through and testing it and registering as coaches. And so far, everything's been going great. So they're going to keep doing that for a few more weeks just to make sure any sort of bugs or, or anything can be fixed before they, they launch it out. But right around December 1st is when they plan on launching it all out. And they will send out tons of emails letting you know once that opens up. So definitely uh, look at your, your email uh, inbox in the next few weeks or so, and you'll start seeing that as well. So we're super excited about it. Um, if there's not any more questions, keep in mind that next week's webinar is going to focus on all the new championship season enhancements. So next week, you will have the opportunity to learn about the new championship season pathway. Uh, you'll be able to discover opportunities for an additional revenue stream with that pathway. You will learn all about all-star play days and the new regional all-star leaderboard. And you will learn about the new flexibility in the program this next year for selecting your all-star team players and for forming all-star teams. So there's a lot of new uh, championship season enhancements that we look forward to sharing with you next week. I have put up on the screen here um, all of our contact information. So you can feel free to, to reach out to Stacy, Chelsea, Brad, Derek, or myself if you need anything at all. And I will leave that up there for a few minutes. Um, but feel free if there's any other questions, chime in. And if not, then we thank you for your time today. Thanks, Brad. I see you put a thank you in there. Thank you. Absolutely, Randy. Glad you could join us. So we hope everybody will be able to jump in next week. And thanks for your time today. And with no more questions, we will say goodbye and say we hope you have a great rest of your day.